Tires, tires, tires. Tires are tricky, especially larger tires. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the, um, the Ram cycle that came out. And, uh, you know, at first I thought that the, these tires were molded as, out of the same plastic as the rest of the bike. And uh, came to realize they're kind of, they're actually kind of rubbery. Like this is slipped over. You can you can kind of tell, but it's molded out of a plastic. But at the end of the day, it, it looks it looks like a hard plastic, and it's um, kind of a satin, not really a gloss. Uh, I don't look at it and think, oh, these are these are off putting. It doesn't distract me from the rest of the bike. But then you know, I look at the the tires on the. Oh, I look at the tires on the ferret. And like these are these beautiful, kind of really rubbery tires, and I think it'd be a real shame if I didn't do that with the piece that I'm doing and try and get as close to this this rubbery tire material as possible. All right, so let's talk about our options. Option number one is FDM. With FDM, we can print tires in PLA, PLA Plus, Nylon, ABS, PET G. Um, a few others, right? But I think the best option of those is gonna be TPU. And I've used TPU to make some tires before. Um, I've used them on, um, you know, like the Prime truck and a couple of my other projects. And they work, but they're not perfect. They're not ideal. TPU is a thermal plastic polyurethane, which is a flexible and durable 3D printing filament. The TPU tires are pretty hard. They have some flex to them, but not much. Uh, because they're FDM, we get these layer lines that I'm just not a fan of. The heat from extruding tends to make them pretty glossy as well, which is also not what I want. Pro, Pro tip. tip! Give your TPU tires a generous spray with flat black paint. Not gloss, not satin, not matte, flat. I use Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer Flat Black. It's available at Walmart for about six bucks. You can go kind of heavy with the spray that will help hide some of the minor layer lines. The tire will be tacky for a day, but once it's dry, it looks much more like a rubbery tire than it did before. F69. F69 is a TPU-like photopolymer resin for DLP. I only just started playing with this stuff, and like TPU, it can be real tricky. Because of the rubbery nature, you have to adjust your slice settings so the G-code can accommodate for it. F69 is kind of expensive, this 500 gram bottle was about 45 bucks. I did one print of a ferret tire and it failed. I've since changed out my FEP and I'm confident I could get it to work, but the results I got from the one print just weren't quite what I was looking for either. The F69 tire was just as hard and glossy as the TPU tire, just without the layer lines. I did use the F69 to print the little cable that runs between the ferret gun and the body. It doesn't really need to flex a whole lot, uh, so it turned out perfect. Ultimately, I decided to use the same material that I used for the harness on the claw that I did. I printed one tire out of Elegoo ABS-like gray with a bit of Tenacious mixed in. When printing a tire or any circle, I highly recommend printing horizontal to the print bed. I find that more often than not, perpendicular printed circles do not turn out as perfect circles. It may look pretty close, but once you once you roll that thing, you'll see a wobble. And if it's really small, that's not gonna be a big deal, but the, the larger you go, the larger that wobble is gonna be. So I cleaned up my resin tire and made a mold out of Smooth On Mold Star 20T. Then cast the tire with Vitaflex 40. Vitaflex is a urethane rubber compound and it's perfect. I chose Mold Star 20 because of its short cure time of only 30 minutes. This means I only have a pot life of about six minutes, but if I have everything prepared ahead of time, it's no problem. If you're mold making for the first time, I would recommend Moldstar 15 Slow. It has a pot life of 50 minutes and cures in four hours. Another option is the Mold Max series, which has about a 40 minute pot life and typically cures in 24 hours. I'm just too impatient, so I want something that can cure and be worked on the same day. If I'm making a two part mold, a 24 hour cure time means it takes me three days before I can find out if the mold even turned out viable. Cause just like 3D printing, the molds don't just work every time. Vitaflex has a pot life of 30 minutes and cures in 16 hours. I had a cure accelerator called Kick It, which greatly reduces the cure time. But an eight hour cure time still means I only get to make one tire per day. 
I also add a product called So Strong Black. This is a liquid urethane colorant which dyes the rubber black. The end result is a soft, flat black rubbery tire with great detail. There is some flash from the space between the two mold halves and some small air pockets at the top of the mold, which I've positioned to appear on the back side of the tire where they won't be noticed. For the wheel or hub, I was able to get great results with FDM, but the DLP was still better. Because these are large, heavy prints, they're a little bit tough on my Elegoo Saturn, especially the FEP because it creates so much suction. I used what I had left of the Moldstar 20 and cast the hub out of Smoothcast 305. 305 is a bright white liquid plastic with a pot life of seven minutes and cures in 30. There's nothing quite as satisfying as cracking open the molds and, and pulling out like a good cast. And that's it, the hub just needs to get painted, but it looks great. You can really see the difference between the FDM printed tires and the cast tires. You can even hear the difference. In part three of building the ferret, I'll be painting the project. I'll see you there.